Hello, and we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. This time we're on Vault Door 3, 200 points, a reverse engineering challenge. Description, this vault uses for loops and byte arrays. The source code for the vault is here. And we can see people really struggle with this. Only 21% of the people succeeded, but people, eh, they seem to like it. Okay, so bringing up the source code here, we're going to take a quick look. And uh, as indicated by the three, this is the third vault door that we've looked at. So I'm going to go a little quickly over some of these areas. This area in particular has been the same throughout all the challenges. And it's just, it's taking user input. It does this kind of annoying uh, substring where it removes some of our input. And then it does a check on the password. And that check is where the actual meat and potatoes has been. And this is actually very true to life in that passwords are generally not just put directly into code files. Instead, what, they're, what they do is they kind of, they do all these small permutations and shifts and everything. So it's a real pain to get to. So let's run this. I will debug it. And I am, so I'm quickly using a, a way to generate a unique string of characters. So I saw that we need at least 32, uh, no, exactly, exactly 32 characters in our password. Otherwise our check password will fail. So if we do not equal 32, we return false and we get access to nine. So what I've done in Python is I used this combination of ASCII lowercase and ASCII uppercase out to the sixth uh, digit of this to create S, which is this nice string. And it'll become apparent why this is such a nice thing in just a minute. So we're gonna debug this. We can see it's prompting us to enter our vault password. We'll go ahead and put this in, but uh, I, can, I can tell you right now it's gonna be wrong and I'll show you why it's wrong, but I, I'd like us to get there together. So we took our user input and we can see it's exactly what we put in. We're happy with that. But we forgot about this annoying substring where it goes from the eighth place to the second to last place. So now you can see input has chopped off the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So very annoying. What we could do is I could have padded this with eight other characters and then one at the end, but instead, and I don't think I've shown you guys this, we can just go in and we can edit this. So I just changed it back to what we want it to be. I pressed enter. And now when we go into the input, it's going to be that value. So it's very cool and very nice to be able to edit things on the fly. All right. So just to prove it, password, ABCD, all the way to the capitals. Great. Uh, I've also added a watch over here, which we're going to see is going to be very useful. So we have this character buffer, which we're creating. And then as we read down the code, we seem to be filling in this character buffer with characters from our password string. And then we create a new string from that buffer. And we ask, is that equal to this just a S A N A whatever this is supposed to be? Is this equal? If so, we succeeded. So what I'm doing over here is I'm just watching what this buffer is currently. So right now it's all uninitialized. There's nothing in there, but you're going to see here, we have uh, a for loop that's going to run over this up to the eighth character, not including the eighth character. So the seventh will go in, I will go to eight, and then we won't go inside this loop. So we're going to see that happen right now. So what that causes is A, B, C, D, E, F, G will all go into the buffer. All right. And now we should be done because we're going to, yeah, exceed our check on the for loop. So now we're in another for loop and we can see this one goes until I is 16. And it does this goofy thing where it's taking 23 and it's subtracting I to determine which password character. So what we passed in to take, I'm going to quickly, I'll do a few and then I'll run through. So you can see it's starting at P and it seems to be writing backwards. We're going to run through. Yes. So it's going backwards. I J K L M. So it's reverse things. Then we have another one that seems to be skipping by twos and subtract 46 minus whatever our I value is. And instead of incrementing I by one, we now increment by two. So kind of another goofy thing that we're going to see. It's going to scramble things quite a bit. So we're working backwards from the beginning or from the end, excuse me. So I'm going to set another breakpoint, and we're going to run through just to see what that gives us. And now we've got one final loop that we're going through and it's decrementing by two. So I is currently 31 and we're going to run until I is 17 or, uh, or less. And we're going to subtract two from each increment of I. So again, we're going to just run through 
And what I want you to see is how scrambled our initial output became. So we had the alphabet just in straight order, and now we have this. And now we're doing a comparison to this string. So what we really need to do is we need to figure out how can our input generate this string. And to do that, we need to take each step along the way, and we need to reverse that. So given this desired output, so given that we want buffer to ultimately equal this, what does password have to equal? And that's what we're going to do right now. Hopefully that made sense. So we will create vault door solution dot Java. Oops, dot Java. Oh, bummer. I don't get the auto completion without spelling correctly. <laughs> Let's do this again. You'll see what I'm talking about. There we go. So it creates the class for us. We're going to want a main method that we're going to run. We know that we are going to start with a string. And we're going to work back from that to generate what our input needs to be. So we'll call this string our goal. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, goal works. And then ultimately what we're trying to get, trying to find input to get to goal. All right, that was just a comment out there if you've never seen one before. So let's start here. So we know if we're to reverse this, we need to take the characters in password starting from 31 and working back to 17 and put them in those buffer positions. Or, uh, excuse me, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Sorry, uh, the other way around. We need to flip this. So password needs to get the value that's, uh, that's over here in this guy. Okay. So we are going to declare an int i. And our password is what we're solving for. And let's make that a character array, I think is a good idea, that we're going to fill in. And we know it has to be 32 characters. We've seen that before. Now, starting at i equals, yeah, we are going to take from the goal. Sorry, I know I'm saying this kind of shorthand, but I, I am doing this live, having done it before in Python, if, if I'm being honest. But uh, I am writing this live in Java. so. Uh, going to take me a little thinking. And I think just to make, yeah, that'll work. That will work. Okay. So we are filling up this password array by doing these characters working backwards. Yes, this looks correct. And you know what is actually going to make our life a lot easier is we know from running, sorry, from running this, so we're, we're trying to work from a password or from a goal to a password, right? So we already have a test case based on what we just ran. We know that this will map to a goal of this. And so if we can go from this goal back to this password, we'll be very happy. So that'll be our test case. And then we'll run it on this to get our final answer. All right, so I'm going to Split the screen here, just so we have a little more real estate. Look at both of them. Uh, so that was that was this guy. And we also need this code. And we need to consider where it's running from. So it runs from 16 to 32. And, and I'm getting that from the i variable is set once at the top, i equals 0. We can see it's incremented. And it's checked against these bounds. So. Uh, I will be 16 when it fails this check and moves on to the next for loop. And then it will run from 16 until it's 32 in this next guy. So we will take this and we'll say int i equals 16. And again, it's we're working on creating password based on our goal. Cool, all right. Then we have another one that we have to do. And we know this bound is from eight to 16. So we're going to take this. Uh, one thing I, I just like to point out is whenever you can reuse the code almost directly, so I'm, I'm able to pull these chunks, and I, I don't even fully understand the code, if I'm honest. And I'm going to look very silly if it doesn't work, and then I'm going to have to figure it out. But I understand generally how the chunks are working, and, and it's enough to reverse whatever the chunk is doing. The specifics of the chunk I'm not interested in right now. 
I, I think that just doing the steps I'm doing will get me there. And so I'm giving it a shot. And uh, sometimes taking that shot can be worth a lot in terms of saving you time ultimately, because maybe it works. And maybe a full analysis of uh, the situation, maybe that takes you dramatically longer. And so uh, you don't lose much by trying is, is what I'm saying. All right, so we should be able to get a password out of this. So let's take our, our uh, goal here, the goal that we know. And we are going to see if this turns, oops, I, I copied the wrong one, sorry. So this is kind of our scrambled uh, lowercase alphabet and then uppercase. You know, when it was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, all lowercase. If we get that again, after running this through it, then we're gonna be very happy with the solution and I think it will work. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna run the code. And what you can expect to see is in this bottom terminal, we're gonna clear everything and you should see it printed out. And I'm actually, I'm gonna make this a little, a little nicer and easier for you guys to see. Our password guess. And then this guy, uh, we need to call new string, I think. This is just some, some Java minutia. This is not something you need to be too concerned about. Actually, let, let me clean that up. I'm sorry. We'll do string password. This is just dealing with types and, uh, and what it expects to see. So it just, it expects to see a string in here. And so I'm gonna give it a string directly like that. So now we're gonna run this. And our password guess, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, all the way to the capitals. So that looks awesome. So let's see if this will give us a password that we can uh, use. Just a simple anagram for you. All right, that seems very good. So let's give that a shot when we go into uh, the code up here. So I'm gonna run through to this point with debugging on. And I don't wanna mess around with the input because I'm just gonna replace it right here. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna update this to just a simple anagram and we are gonna step over the check and see if it passes. And it failed. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> Why would it fail? It's very interesting. Let me check something else. I, I am sure this is the flag. I am just messing something up and I'm not quite sure what it is. Let me make sure this is the flag first. It is the flag, hooray, we solved the challenge. Now what went wrong though? So let's restart and let's try this. Make this bigger so you can see. So we have our, just a simple anagram. We pass that check. We're gonna run all the way down here to see what happens after all the silliness that happens above. S, that matches. Um, I think I just copied and pasted it wrong. All right, perfect. So hopefully that was helpful for you and you learned something about how to uh, kind of reverse Java programs. If it was helpful, please like, subscribe, and comment. Appreciate it, bye.